Hi, Jeff Grimshaw, BN, and once again, here with Mike Silver, candidate for Vermont House District 2-1 here in Bennington. Mike, welcome. Thank you very much, Jeff. It's a great morning at a beautiful spot, great facility for our veterans. Uh, we should always fight for this facility. Okay. You know, there's an interesting story that was just published that this place returned $800,000 back to the state. That's a great story. I, I did see that, and uh, I just got to tell you, this is hallowed ground, not just because of the veterans that came here and fought for our country, but the people that passed away here. And my mom and dad were both one of them. And uh, I'm getting a little emotional, but they took really good care of my mom and dad. Very good. So um, you definitely have uh, done some uh, uh, big doings with the uh, Veterans Affairs uh, in the past, like 2010. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Uh, I was actually out of the legislature and had been in a horrific accident down in West Virginia and had suffered a lot of things similar to what would might be an explosion. The people that hit me lost the front end of their car, their tires, their axle, and their engine. Uh, so, you know, I was, I was very much concerned about this PTSD and how many different centers were around the United States because these young people, these young men and women were coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq and, and they were taking their lives. And I had looked into it and there was only one res uh, research PTSD center in, on the whole East Coast in Maryland and I thought I should do something about that, Jeff. Okay, and so what, how, what did you do? Well, I jumped on a bus that the chamber had sponsored to visit Montpelier, and I didn't tell anyone why I was going there, but I had thorough thoughts of, you know, I'm going there to help the veterans, the veterans here and the veterans everywhere. So I jumped on the bus and sat in the back of the bus and read papers on the way up, and everyone was going to uh, go to lunch and meet their legislators and all. And I kind of broke away from the group, and uh, I buttoned hold a great legislator from here, Joe Krasik, a veteran, a hero. And I think he retired as a lieutenant colonel. And I said, look, Joe, we've got this problem with only one PTSD center on the East Coast. We need to do something. We, what can you do? Can we uh, sponsor a House resolution from the Vermont House and send it to all those people that were important and have them think more about this problem and do something about it? So the power of Joe Krasik, the power of you, and I want to say the power of the, Benning, uh, the uh, Bennington Area Chamber of Commerce, which does sponsor the Under the Dome. You put all those forces together and you got stuff done. Yes, yeah, so what happened was uh, Joe and I worked back and forth. He, he had a resolution written and the Bennington delegation, the entire delegation put their name on it. Uh, what it did was it asked for more funding for the VA budget because it was underfunded. It didn't specifically mention PTSD, but the message was there. It went to the President of the United States, the head of the VA, Nancy Pelosi in, in the House, uh, the leaders in the Senate. It went to our congressional delegation. It went to the governor and it went to our VA head. So I felt good because it did pass and it did send that message. And it was a message I wanted to send. So I got back on the bus and people that rode up with me said, Mike, where'd you go? What'd you do? I said, I didn't do anything. And, and I, I got in the back of the bus and kind of went to sleep, you know. Okay, so the power of one and uh, Mike Silver appears to be the power of one and a man, he calls himself a fighter, that sounds like a fight and it worked. Let's go on to another subject and another issue that is near and dear to your heart and that is uh, seniors here in this area. Yes, uh, was a big supporter of seniors, continued to be. When I was in the legislature, there was a hot potato. There was this lady who worked for Sears and she had been there for 12 years and she was a widow. And she needed that additional income of, of, above and beyond her social security to pay the taxes on her house. So she had worked in the ladies dressing room in Burlington. On her 70th birthday, a, a member of Sears Corporate came in and said, Happy birthday. Oh, by the way, we have to let you go. We have a policy that no one 70 years of age or older can work for us. And the lady had never missed a day, never been late from what I was told. So uh, a bill was put in the legislature. It went into my committee. 
<clears throat> we passed it unanimously, but it was going to be a hot potato out there because Sears had a lot of power in the legislature, and they even had a, a couple of attorneys that were in there that were fighting for the corporate side. So uh, I talked with my dad, who again was here as a patient and, and they took great care of him he was a world war ii veteran and i said dad what am i going to do about this i was 25 years old and i'm going up against a lawyer from yale and a lawyer from cornell and he said michael explain the issue to me i did he said michael right makes might i said explain that to me dad what do you mean he said right makes might you're on the right side of the issue this is going to armor you. If they attack you, don't worry about it. You just tell the truth and you stick up for what is right and they will not put a chink in your armor. And I did it. And I, I made my presentation, my committee presentation without a microphone. Didn't have a microphone, just stood right up there and did my presentation and, and asked that the House members pass the bill. They attacked me to no avail. It became a law. But there's a little footnote to this story. The next day, I get a letter at my desk, and it's from the governor's office. And the governor asked me to go into the office. So I went in the office, of course. You're sitting there, even though the session's running, and the governor wants you. You go to the governor's office. So I went in, and it was Governor Snelling. And Governor Snelling had taken me under my, his wing when I was a freshman legislator. He actually took me to uh, hockey games over at UVM, and I had a chance to sit with George and Lola Aiken. That's another story, and it's a great story. But the point is the governor said, Mike, under Robert's Rules of Orders, next legislative day, and I believe you said Rule 21, I want you to change your vote from the affirmative to the negative, and we'll pull this bill, we got enough votes now, out of the house back in the committee will let it die I said well why do you want to do that well you know the democrats embarrassed us i said governor you know i have senior citizens and there were, there were handicapped people in the bill too for job discrimination i said i have senior citizens and handicapped people in my district i'm not going to change my vote and he said I want you to change your vote and he had a big state trooper behind him and I knew he went to Harvard but he was also on the boxing team so I got a little bit more away from him and I said governor you don't tell me what to do you're an intelligent man you went to Harvard you know about the balance of powers you know uh, the executive branch legislative branch judicial branch you don't tell me what to do the people from Bennington uh, 4 2 tell me what to do they sent me up here and he goes even more forcefully I want you to change your vote and I didn't mean to say it and I I said it, I said, Governor, shove it where the sun doesn't shine. I'm not changing my vote. And he says, well, the same to you, and there'll be no more uh, pictures when your bills pass, and I sign them, and you won't get the pen. I said, you know what, Governor, senior citizens are more important than getting a pen. Thank you very much. I went out the door, and Ralph Wright was the Democratic leader then, and he had his ear to the to the keyhole. And he said, what happened? What happened? What happened? I said, I told the governor to shove it where the sun doesn't shine. And he said, no, you didn't. I said, yes, I did. Well, it got around the legislature so much. And I was so well liked that the governor didn't dare veto the bill. And it became law before federal law. Okay. So now you're asking for another chance for the voters to send you back up there to uh, not make more trouble, but to get involved in fights and, 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 and Right makes right. That's it. Yeah, okay. right makes might. That's for sure. Thanks a lot, Jeff. I appreciate it. Very good. Mike Silver for Vermont House 2-1 Bennington. He hopes he gets your vote. For BNN, I'm Jeff Grimshaw. This is BNN, the Bennington News Network.